Hey friend, Roger Christofferson here again with another First Listen Review. This is where we sit around and we babble about music that we love. And yes, as I recently just had somebody point out to me on my one of my more recent reviews, is all I did was talk about the music. I didn't play any music. Um, yeah, that's what I do. That's what the description says. <laughs> that's what we do here. We talk about music. Um, I don't know why that's such a shock to people. Uh, I don't know. There's lots of channels that do what I do. I'm not like the inventor of this. There's a lot of people that just sit around talking about music. I love it. I love watching those shows. I love listening to people talk about it. I love being engaged in the conversation about music. That's what this channel is all about. Um, and also, it really sucks when YouTube takes down a video because somebody copyright claims you, even when it's your own stuff, like I just recently had done. Um, so, yeah, we don't play the songs because, you know, People like to take the videos down, so that's why we don't do it. Um, one of the other reasons, anyway. But yeah, I love talking about music, babbling as I like to call it, and uh, this is what we do here. Today we're going to babble about Words of Black and their brand new album, and I don't even know if I'm going to say this right, The Mechanics of Predicity. And uh, I didn't really know what that was, kind of had to look it up, not going to lie. Uh, you know, full disclosure here, and I still don't quite understand what it's all about, but it has to do with like Hunter and Hunted, so... That's the easiest description I can come up with. Um, really love this band. In case anybody's not familiar with uh, Lords of Black, it's uh, you know Ronnie Romero's main band. This is like was his main thing even before he hooked up with Rainbow and and everybody else. Um, so I mean, it seems like every other week I'm doing a review on something Ronnie Romero's involved in here, but this is his main one, and uh, it's got a uh, main songwriter composer everything Tony Hernando has been like the main um, person in this he's actually been involved in some other stuff you know like Restless Spirits and stuff like that so um, so both of those guys have been involved in other projects but this is their main one here and uh, it's this is for me this is what I feel Ronnie sounds amazing um, he sings on other stuff I think he sounds great no matter what he does don't get me wrong uh, but sometimes it sounds like he's singing for somebody else um vandenberg comes to mind i didn't think he fit with that one vandenberg is one of my favorite guitarists ever one of my favorite bands growing up uh a little bit out in left field nobody really knew him i shouldn't say nobody but nobody i knew the hang around with really knew him as well as i did i love that band so when he came on board it, it didn't gel for me this is where i think he gels um i think he sounds great in this band and this album in particular is just another progression for this band i've actually always really liked them they i don't know how you describe the music it's kind of power metal-ish but uh, it's got touches of progressive and just straight ahead heavy metal in it i don't really know what, what else you would really define it as but not that we really have to do that but sometimes it helps you know using these uh you know descriptions to help people understand that haven't heard them you know what they're kind of going to sound like um, you know, I don't like pigeonholing any bands, although we just tend to do it because we just like to know what it is we're talking about, I guess. But anyway, so yeah, this one, uh, it just kicks in. The first like few songs are just exactly what you would expect. I mean, you got For What Is Owed To Us, Let The Nightmare Come. Those two just like kick in full throttle, uh, just, you know, rocking out. You know, exactly what I've, you know, nothing really too different there. Uh, I want the darkness and let it burn. I also kind of like actually uh, go down that same road that really not too much different happening until we get to track number five, Can We Be Heroes Again? And I, I was actually, this one was like left field. It still rocked, but it sounded, and I know I, this has probably been referred to in other reviews. I actually haven't watched or read anything quite yet on this one. <clears throat> but to my ears... I was hearing like it was huge inspiration from Queen and Freddie Mercury. I, I was it just sounds like a long lost Queen song rocked up a little bit, and I like it when bands do stuff like this and it works. If you take a chance and uh, it doesn't work, you know, and the bands tend to get like criticized for that. I think this worked. I really like that song. Uh, it's kind of a poppy type sound, and it definitely sings in a style that. Freddie Mercury sings, and I've never heard him do that before, so that one kind of made me sit back and had to go back and listen to that. I mean, I have listened to this a few times, but I definitely went back and checked that one out first before I even did my second playthrough on this one, so definitely cool. And then it goes into Crown of Thorns, which is probably my favorite song on the whole album. That one just had this big epic chorus, 
this the build up to it and uh, just really really enjoyed uh, those two songs right in a row were just killer and I, like a lot of the songs on here they're not short songs I mean not super short anyway I mean within the uh, four and a half to six minute range actually Crown of Thorns is almost seven minutes long but you know they they don't cut the songs down to make them fit you know radio play or anything like that and I I don't mind short songs I don't mind long songs as long as the song does what it's supposed to do and it makes you want to hear it again and it doesn't bore you and it actually takes you down some type of um, you know you know journey I guess so that being said you know the next couple songs on here Obsessions of the Mind Build the Silence in a World That's Departed or uh, excuse me just the next two Obsessions of the Mind and Build the Silence cool little five minute songs back to the rock and you know Lords of Black that we're used to hearing uh, but we get to track number nine and this one is 11 minutes long it's really uh, more of a prog uh, experiment I guess uh, and it's not it doesn't get super proggy but you know in progressive music it takes and turns and takes different avenues and you know flows like a, a story and this one has actually has three different parts to it and uh, in the middle of it, there's like a you can hear the the breakdown changes, and there's like actually a little piano solo in the middle of it, and then you know it just goes through its different progressions, and it's one of those like I was just trying to explain. I don't mind if it's a long song as long as it makes you want to hear it again and it takes you on some type of journey. It's exactly what this one did. I really enjoyed that song. Um, the last song, "Born Out of Time," it's got this cool little guitar thing at the beginning of it. Um, that uh, a little bit different tones than we're used to hearing, and then it goes goes back into like a really rock and power metal type sounding song. Um, quite honestly, that one either I would have left it off the album, or I would have placed it, you know, maybe higher up in the uh, the flow there. Because once you hear a world that's departed, that was like the perfect ending for me. I mean, this is his personal opinion. That's all this ever is, is personal opinion. But my thoughts on that was. Once I was done listening to a World That's Departed, I was I was done. That was cool. That was the album right there. And then there's this extra little thing at the end that just seemed like it didn't need to be there. So anyway, that's just my little thought on it. My thoughts on the album. Really enjoyed it. It's definitely going to be spending some time in the player. And, uh, you know, because I love CDs and it's spent some time in the player. So anyway, that's just my thoughts on it. As always, I welcome anybody else to share what they thought of it. Or Lords of the Black. Or not Lords of the Black. Lords of Black. I don't know why that's such a problem for me to say, but it's Lords of Black. And uh, as always, like, share, and subscribe to keep the music alive, because this is one of those bands I w just can't wait to hear the next thing. I I'm going to love this one for a while, but it's one of these bands I hope sticks around keeps making albums. So on that note, we'll say uh, see you until the next one. So see you.